They deregulated the SNLs. They got the government off the backs of those honorable business people. Turned out they'd be the biggest bunch of crooks in the history of the country. And those crooks and those swindlers, protected by both political parties, are responsible for enormous suffering all over this country. And we will do something about that. You have financial institutions playing with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. The theory of deregulation is that we're going to get the big bad government off of the backs of the savings and loans institutions so that these institutions can go on out and do their business and invest in their communities. Well, it turns out that deregulation was a fraud also. And what happens is when these guys screw up and one of these institutions go down, they take other institutions with them. You know, I have the distinction, I maybe a dubious one, to sit on the banking committee. And let me tell you, that is a piece of work. What deregulation ended up doing is allowing the SNL industry to go out and to rob, to steal, to plunder. I remember, it's a funny story, I taught at Harvard for a little while, and when I was there, I had the opportunity to meet the guy who was president of NBC News, as it happens. And funny, I'll never forget what he said. He said, uh, there had been a terrible airplane crash in the Midwest uh, at around that time, and he said, when that crash took place, I sent, I don't know, 15 reporters there. We had 83 cameras there. We covered this crash day in and day night. It was good television. And somebody said to him, well, what about the savings and loan bailout? You know, where you had these huge zillionaire bankers ripping off the system, the biggest act of fraud in the history of the Western world. He said, oh, well, that was kind of boring television. It just didn't make good TV. No, we didn't, we didn't cover that stuff too much.